Hi, I'm Doug Murray, principal of Chardon High School. And today we are presenting to you our CCP and CHS curriculum night. And it's different. We're not standing in front of you in the auditorium known as the LGAR or even in our gym. We're presenting to you online and it has its benefits. For example, you'll be able to watch this over and be able to hear more specific things that our counselors are going to share today or our assistant principals are going to share. But it's not the same. That's being able to see you in person. So there's a couple things that I want to share with you in this introduction. One is how much we care for you guys. We care for your families. We care for your sons and daughters. And we're trying to do everything we can in the current system to keep your students safe. But it takes both work of us and also the work of you and all of the things that we can do together to make sure that we are going to continue our school year. Today, we are going to present many things. And the things that we are going to present relate to opportunities. And opportunities come in different ways. Here at Chardon High School, we have many opportunities for students to take courses in regular track, uh, honors track, AP track, and then ultimately the College Credit Plus track. And it's all about what is the right fit for you? What is the right size? What is the right direction? Here we discuss our four E's. By the time that a student graduates, when they come across the stage, we want to make certain that every student knows if they are going to continue in enrollment, or if they're going to enlist in the armed forces, or they're going to be employed. And ultimately, the last E is entrepreneurship that kind of crystallizes it all together and being a self-advocate for what they love and what their passions are for. See, I'm a big person that uh, speaks of the why. Why are we here? What is our purpose? And our why comes right through our values of what we stand for and the intentionality of the things that we present to you today will help you make the best decisions for your son or your daughter, or if this is a student, for you. Today, you are gonna hear from our guidance department. who are gonna speak on behalf of the College Credit Plus process. And I understand that many of our students have already been in CCP in grades seven through 12. And in particular, we saw an increased role uh, in, in the pandemic year for many of our students choosing to go to Lakeland uh, or Kent Geauga. We also are very cognizant that our students in the class of 23 are in their fourth year of their high school experience. And also concurrently is the class of 22, they're in their fourth year. So we are gonna see an advancement of students that are both gonna be placed in AP courses and the potential aspect of students taking CCP courses. So this presentation is really important to follow. You're gonna hear from the guidance counselors covering those things in College Credit Plus, timelines and procedures that you have to do in order to be prepared for this. And you're also gonna hear about the extraordinary classes that we have at Chardon High School and the offerings that are in front of you. You're gonna hear that from our assistant principals. But you will also be able to see this inside of slides and going through presentations where there might be embedded movies. And then ultimately, uh, you will see it in our program of study that you can follow sequentially. There's a lot of information that's coming out today. And at the end of this presentation, on February 11th at 7 p.m., we will have the opportunity for question and answers. But we wanted to give you a week to be able to review these things, put down your questions, maybe ask them directly to our counselors or administrators, um, but also provide you a live Q&A session. So without further ado, I would like to present to you our guidance counselors. What is College Credit Plus? So as you can see on the screen, College Credit Plus is really just an opportunity for students to take college level classes and also earn high school credits at the same time. There's definitely some differences between CCP that students and parents really need to consider when making a determination whether or not you feel your son or daughter or you are ready to take these CCP classes. We have the ability to, students have the ability to take these classes on our campus. We offer a number of business classes or you can take them on the school's campus. And that could be anything from Lakeland to Kent Geauga, Hiram, Cleveland State, Lake Erie. 
we have students in about five or six different colleges around the area that are taking classes on those campuses. So some things that you guys need to consider when you're trying to determine what you want to do with CCP. The first thing I'm going to remind students is that the schedule of a college campus like a Lakeland or a Kent Geauga is going to be different than Chardon's schedule. We operate on a bell schedule where classes meet four to five days a week. At the college level, your class may meet once a week. It may meet three times a week. It might meet every day. You need to be very intentional and understand what you're signing up for when you register for classes. Some other big differences and the, probably the most important one I want to point out on this screen is going to be the calendar. Lakeland classes, Lake Erie classes, they don't start the same time of school year as we do. Our classes are typically going to start somewhere around the middle of August in a typical year. Lakeland didn't start until after um, September 1st this year. Likewise, Christmas break was five weeks this year. The college calendar and the Chardon calendar is not always going to line up. Spring breaks might be at different times. Those are things that you need to be aware of, again, when you're kind of making these decisions. So some CCP classes at Chardon. As I mentioned, we offer four different business classes here. We offer intro to business, business ethics, business communications, and an intro to entrepreneurship. If you are looking at taking one of these business classes on our campus, the most important thing you need to know is that this process for CCP must be done by the end of this school year. We really can't be getting into the summer and into August and then make these kinds of changes with Lakeland. As those classes fill up, they might not run and it definitely becomes a bit of a scheduling um, nightmare, for lack of a better way to say it, if we're really putting this off. So if you're thinking of CCP, you need to be responsible. You need to get that process taken care of by the end of the school year. Other things to know about College Credit Plus. So students are allowed to take a maximum of 30 college credits over the course of a school year. And this is a combination of your high school classes and your college classes. For every high school class you take, that equates to three credit hours towards that 30. So if you were taking three high school classes and then CC classes the rest of the way, you would do those three high school classes and then 21 credits would be the maximum you would be allowed over the course of a school year. And this includes the summer. We have a lot of students that actually take advantage of doing summer classes through CCP. And it, that summer classes you take, though, do count towards your 30. So you need to keep in mind your summer, fall, and then spring is the equivalent of 30. Some things also you need to know about College Credit Plus. So CCP does not allow you to take any class that a college may offer. They're going to cover about 90% of the courses that are available, but certain things like study abroad classes or remedial classes, students that didn't quite qualify for the full college class, those are not going to be covered under College Credit Plus. Um, Mrs. Hetrick is going to be talking in a moment, and she's going to talk a little bit about some of the qualifications and the placement test scores that you need to earn to be able to take these college level classes. If you don't test into certain classes, they do have remedial courses, but those are not going to be covered under CCP. Also, no study abroad. Unfortunately, you can't go visit a nice warm country this time of year um, and have CCP play, pay for that. I'm going to actually have Ms. Hetrick talk a little bit about some of the CCP probation. All right, here we go. Good evening. Um, a couple years ago, CCP or the state of Ohio actually put in a process for um, probation for students who are underperforming with CCP courses. And as you can see on the screen, a um, couple things trigger probation for a student. Um, first of all, failing any course will trigger probation falling below a 2.0 accumulative GPA at the college, um, also withdrawing from two or more courses in a semester. There is a process once the school, like the high school Chardon sees the grades and something triggers probation for a student, um, then we have paperwork we need to fill out with the student and, um, review basically the courses. Um, the school, we, Chardon has the right to allow you to continue to participate, but with the parameters set by the state of Ohio. 
Um, you can a student can also be removed from CCP who ends up um, on probation if they fail multiple classes. And so that's a it's a detailed process, and we have paperwork and a a, a contract and a plan written out that we actually would meet with you and follow. So it's, it's an important consideration um, before deciding to participate because we want to make sure a student is going to be successful with CCP courses. Another con important piece of this in um, many students, unfortunately, especially with a lot of remote learning and online courses, we've seen this more than ever, but there is a potential financial consequence for students who fail a course or withdraw from a course after the drop deadlines. And the district will bill the student for those credit hours. And you can see the just a summary of what that would look like through Lakeland's CCP. Um, different colleges, it's going to be a different price range. Um, we have a partnership with Lakeland, so our credit hours through Lakeland are actually less expensive than Kent Geauga or um, Lake Erie College or one of the other private schools. So that's a very important consideration because you want to go into CCP knowing you're going to pass your classes um, because it could end up costing quite a bit of money. So just, just an important piece of um, the decision making and making sure that um, when you decide to apply and subsequently schedule courses that you understand going into it that um, you will pay for classes that if you were to fail something. All right, general participation process here. Um, one of the beginning things the state requires is that we hold an information send session for all families, which is being articulated in this, um, this curriculum night presentation. And later, a little couple screens down, we've also um, embedded a presentation from Lakeland specifically with more details about participating through Lakeland. Um, not all of our students participate at Lakeland. We have students at Kent Geauga, Lake Erie College, Tri-C, Cleveland State, Hiram. So there are multiple schools that students can participate in CCP through. Um, with our partnership with Lakeland, you'll hear us refer to Lakeland most often. The um, application process for each school is really through the individual school's website. And so we're kind of going to guide you. But once you actually decide to go ahead and apply to a co one of the colleges or multiple colleges, then you would go to their CCP page and follow their process. So this is the first step here as far as watching the video. Secondly, there is a, an intent form that is attached right here. The intent form is required by the state and we've attached it here in this presentation. It is available on paper and guidance. Um, if somebody wants it emailed to them, we can also email it. The key date to that, and again, this is a, a date set by the state, is April 1st. And it just, it needs to be turned into the guidance office at Chardon High School. And it is, I believe, over spring break this year. So if, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but um, if it is indeed over spring break, then we would, um, you know, we would accept it like the first day back. But um, that would be something we will continue to communicate with you on. Um, and again, going then, then once the intent form is done, going to the school website, retrieving an online application, and requesting transcripts from Chardon to be sent to the school or the schools which you want to um, you want us to send them to. Because all the applications are online, we need for students to let us know as soon as they've applied to one of the colleges. That's the only way we're going to be able to get the transcripts sent to the college. So that is very critical. The student either emails us, stops in and says, hey, I just applied to Lakeland. 
um, whatever the case might be, but the student needs to let us know that they need the transcript sent. Now, the other piece of this is, as far as getting accepted into CCP, is um, taking a placement test. ACT scores can count for placement, and I believe we have a screen here in a minute with the scores that you need on the ACT, but the colleges each also have their own placement tests as well. One of the requirements by the state is that students have to be, quote, college ready. So this involves, um, of course, their transcript. Basically, what's been looked at is what are their, what would the normal acceptance um, protocols be for a student if they were graduating senior? And so a student applying for CCP basically needs to meet those same qualifications, whether it be through the ACT and their transcripted grades from Chardon High School or the AccuPlace or placement exam. Um, and then the college will accept the students based on these criteria. So as you see here, um, here's more specific information about the placement. Um, the, and I mentioned ACT equivalencies. There's also SAT equivalencies and then scores on the AccuPlacer. So that is another important consideration. Here's the screen. This on this screen is the presentation that's given by Lakeland Community College, and you can click right on this in order to um, get basic information from Lakeland, but it, it's procedural information that would apply to really any of the schools that you're looking at. We encourage students to be talking to us as they're looking into CCP and trying to make decisions. Um, okay, I'm gonna backtrack just a moment here and because um, I'm going to talk about the scheduling timeline in a second. But just some other kind of summary considerations that we want to make sure we're going over with students um, is, is as students begin to get accepted to schools and decide to participate, several things they need to consider. Um, scheduling, we already mentioned scheduling courses, um, holidays, spring break are often different. Um, scheduling around activities, Chardon, if students are in sports and they have to work around practices and games, um, often the colleges have classes in the evenings, even on the weekends for that matter. So students need to be able to work around those time frames, and that often becomes limited. Um, financial responsibility we've mentioned, if a student were to fail a class or be an underperforming student. Um, Travel time, if the weather's bad in the winter, often a student, you know, Chardon might be canceled, but the college will not be most of the time. So another consideration. Um, pace of courses is very different. And so, again, if a student is qualified, they really do have to be college ready, and they're going to be right in courses with, you know, traditional college students. At Lakeland, often they're going to be in classes with um they might be in classes with adult learners that are going back to school for the first time in years. So all considerations, especially with some of the younger students that want to participate as well. And, you know, so we encourage you to have conversations with us about some of these things if you have um, concerns about that. Also, extremely important, um, athletic eligibility. Students still need to um, communicate changes in their Lakeland schedule. There is a drop form, um, a drop ad form if students are changing classes at the college level and they need, you still need to maintain a, an appropriate number of classes to be eligible and um, it works, basically it's set up not quarterly but students um, taking CCP courses are determined eligible or ineligible at the semester typically. And I think we just get typically a progress report from the college at the quarter to verify eligibility. And that usually we work with Mr. Snyder also on that as well. Um, so just kind of looking through my little list of things here. 
Um, the eligibility, that's what I wanted to make sure I was saying the right number here. Minimum, students have to be in a minimum of at least nine credits each semester if they're a full-time CCP student to stay eligible for activities. So that's the key number with CCP classes. Um, so moving forward, I just want to kind of run through is the curriculum night presentation. In a few minutes here, you're going to hear about department information and courses we're offering. Um, but this screen just articulates a basic timeline for the scheduling process. Students will complete their registration for electives online through Infinite Campus, and we will walk them through the process in a separate video for students. And then teachers will be doing recommendations during the um, week of February 16th. And hopefully, students will have an opportunity to talk to their teacher about their courses for next year as far as recommendations go. And, um, and then the teacher will enter that into Infinite Campus. And then after that week, beginning around the 22nd of February, the portal will be open for students to select their elective courses at that point. And so we will um, keep students informed. We will be recording a video for students with more course information and other things. So that kind of sums up what I have to say. Do you have anything else, Mr. Holbrook? Okay. Thank you for watching. Hi, Sharon families. I'm Ryan Bandera, one of the assistant principals at Sharon High School, and I'm joined today by... Ben Heim, the other assistant principal here at Sharon High School. Today we're going to talk about some of the course offerings or department offerings that are available to our students um, for the 21-22 school year. We're not giving a full descriptive um, version of every course. We're just going to give a quick um, update from each department and follow along with us. Um, but students will have more opportunities to ask questions with their counselors when they go over the full course requirements and have their meeting with their school counselor. All right, let's begin with our art department. Um, our art department at Sharon High School does phenomenal work, as you can see here on the screen. Mr. Himes is going to highlight some of the classes here at Sharon High School that um, we'd like to talk about for the art department. So with the art department, if you look at the eighth grade, there'll be several options for them to kind of kind of wet their feet with, into the arts here at Sharon High School. But once they're able to get through those, starting in the high school level, starting in ninth grade, we offer a course called Art Foundations. That is the key course that all students must take and then be able to get into future art courses. So if you have not taken an art course, you need to take Art Foundations. If you've taken that, you know, there's quite a uh, array of other opportunities that go from some drawing all the way into the utilization of computers and technology. And I think there's something there for everyone. So we're very excited about the offerings here in art. Excellent. Um, moving on from there, we talk next about our business and technology department. Um, our business, business technology department um, covers a wide range of classes, um, including some CCP classes and um, some AP level classes as well, um, along with classes for our eighth grade students. Um, I'm going to quickly play this video here and so you can see some of their offerings, but you can review this on your own as well. Students who need ideas for what electives to take need to look no further than the technology department. Computer Science Discoveries is an introductory course that empowers students to engage with computer science as a medium for creativity, communication, problem solving, and fun. Web Design and Development is for the student who wants to learn to design beautiful and informational websites. Game and app design is for the student who wants to think like a computer scientist and see things in a new way. AP Computer Science Principles is a course that challenges students to explore how computing and technology can improve the world around them. Multimedia design is for students who want to help with the important task of getting the daily video announcements produced. Want to have a positive impact on the world? Sign up today!
There's also a um, wide range of business classes here at Charnum. I'm going to play this quick video to kind of explain some of those classes. A lot of those classes are linked to the College Credit Plus program described earlier in this presentation. Hello, I'm Al Herner, and I teach our College Credit Plus business courses here at CHS. I'm an adjunct faculty member at Lakeland Community College, and I hold an MBA from Lake Erie College, so that allows us to teach these courses on site. We have four CCP business classes that we offer at CHS. Introduction to Business, it's a comprehensive introductory business course, a required course for any freshman business major, so most schools accept this as fulfilling that requirement, freeing up that freshman to take another course. Business Ethics, Current events and up-to-date case studies are used to analyze ethical business practices. Introduction to entrepreneurship, an introductory look at what it takes to build a business from the ground up, from idea to exit strategy. And business communication, students polish their resume, establish a LinkedIn profile, and learn the ins and outs of communicating within the work environment. They also learn how to conduct themselves online in a business environment, an important skill, especially today, when they might be required to telecommute for work or participate in meetings remotely. Business communication is considered an upper level class at Lakeland Community College. Here's the difference between taking a business class on site here at CHS versus taking the same course on the Lakeland campus. A student will receive the same content and assessments. A class here will actually have additional class time, better access to the instructor. A student still has access to any of the resources available on campus should they choose, and we follow the Chardon calendar here. With the extra class time we've had available for these courses, we have augmented them with real-world experiences for our students. That includes guest speakers, either in person or virtually via video conferencing. And those have ranged from local business owners and entrepreneurs to CEOs and CFOs of larger corporations. In addition, we have uh, taken our students into the field with the help of Geauga Growth Partnership to see local businesses and get a feel for their operations firsthand. I appreciate your time. Hopefully I've given you a feel for the four CCP business courses we offer here at CHS. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact me and contact your guidance counselor for registration materials. Thank you. And as Mr. Hunter said, we're excited to offer those classes, those business classes here on our campus um, to allow our students that taste of that CCP program as well. Moving on to our CBI program, or the CREW as it's called. Um, the CREW was a first year program in 2020-21 school year. Um, and they've done some very exciting things this year, um, kind of getting some real world work experience, um, doing jobs around the building, um, also out in the community as well. Along with getting that job experience and opportunities, they're also kind of finding a little bit more about who they are as a individual, what they may want to do, it sets them up for potential work at Auburn Career Center or maybe to study a specific coursework here at the high school to prepare for a future trade or job or potentially college even it's when they matriculate through the high school. And there's a few different course levels. Um, courses available for our students all the way from grades 9 all the way up through grades 12, um, just depending on kind of where they fit into that program. Um, if you're more interested in the crew, make sure you please talk to some of the instructors or your school counselor, and they can kind of give you some more information about those courses and some of the jobs that the crew has done this year. Um, and it takes us next to our service learning department. Um, service learning, again, was something that we've been working on for the last couple of years, but we also um, kind of uh, went a little bit more widespread for the um, 2021 school year. Um, service learning focuses on um, opportunities for our students to provide service to the community in a variety of settings. Um, it kind of builds a very small school into a larger school setting. So this year, the service learning uh, department or program 
is trying to implement some of uh, the coursework actually into the service and into the leadership opportunities that they've had. So students have a little more flexibility in their schedule, a little bit more flexibility on what they want to learn and study specifically in math and science. So the, the current feedback from students that are very uh, appreciative and excited for the work that the instructors have provided in this setting. And if you're someone who's just, you know, someone of giving of, of yourself to others and want to learn a little bit more about how you can become a leader at Sharon High School and in the rest of your life, check out service learning. I think you might be, it might be something you're really interested in. All right, that takes us to our amazing English language arts department. Um, English language arts is one of those um, required courses. There's some required courses that you're required to take every year. Um, obviously, eighth graders are taking you know their eighth grade English or their honors um, English one, all the way through our twelfth grade year of um, whether you're taking that senior English or the AP classes um, of, of courses there. Um, Mr. Heim, would you like to talk about some of the electives in the English department? We have quite a few electives. We have electives where students can do more on the reading side, all the way to the writing side and to the performing side. So if you have any interest of the arts or into literature in general, uh, there's great opportunities for you to find who, who you are and display that to uh, others here at Sharon High School and to our community when we put on uh, different events. So a lot of great opportunities in the English department. And in most typical years, there's a lot of um, real world experiences too. As you can see in some of the pictures here, um, the, the theater, the, the um, language arts live, uh, theater arts, all those things are included in that English department as well, and, and some book clubs as well. All right, um, health, healthy living is an important part of life, a uh, class that probably many of us wish we would have focused on a little bit more in high school. Um, but health and phys ed um, is a department um, beyond meeting a high school graduation requirement. Um, they do a lot of a lot of learning, a lot of interactive experiences as well um, in the health and PE department at Charn High School. So one of the things you've always thought about in the physical education and health is working on how your appearance, the outer self of you, uh, but also in this time of the pandemic and the way society has changed, there's more of the mental side, the inside of a person and uh, the teachers in the health and phys ed department do a great job of bringing out and building a whole student uh, inside and out. So great opportunity, something to consider. Um, take, a, take a look at what they have to offer. And some of those courses too are um, designed for different levels of ability. Um, some students you know, want to go in and kind of have the very basic PE course where you're kind of playing some team games and learning, doing some physical fitness. Um, other students are more focused on that sports training where they're um, focusing their their energy and activities towards preparing for a specific sport, whether that's baseball, football, track, soccer, any of those sports. All right, uh, Mr. Hines' favorite department is next, our math department here. Uh, we're going to talk a little about that math department and some of the course offerings that are required and some of the things that are offered as elective courses as well. So the next slide you see here is a little bit of a course sequence of a, a traditional path for many of our students, depending where they start in eighth grade and it kind of builds upon as the offerings can go. But what we're excited about is we're always trying to tweak our offerings to provide real life experiences for our students that they can use math in what they're going to do in future endeavors. So that's something we focus on. We continue to have conversations to make sure we're providing courses that meet the needs of all our students, no matter if they're on the bottom, middle, or top. We have students at all levels and we're trying to provide coursework that provides those opportunities. There are different specific options for after algebra two. Those mostly are for our seniors, but there are some juniors that drop into some of those courses. We try to have a wide variety of interests for those students. Also along with a few electives uh, that we have found to be pretty exciting in the, with our students this year. And we're hoping to build upon those moving forward next year. And that's cost of living on your own, kind of a real life. What does it really cost to be able to live on your own? And then do a little bit of the game and puzzle theory, like the strategy behind games that many of us enjoy doing in our free time. So those are just a few of the things uh, that we're offering here in the math department. All right, so, uh, we get to some of our uh, fun departments for a lot of our students. I know this is one of the places I spent a lot of my high school career was in that band and um, uh, vocal music department. 
Uh, we'll start with our band. Uh, band has some different offerings for our students depending on what grade level you're in. Um, you could focus on our eighth grade band, obviously, um, for our eighth grade students. And then when you get into the high school level, you have some opportunities to be in um, the symphonic band or the wind ensemble, which is more of a little bit more um, tryout group, um, some veteran members of, uh, you know, veteran members of the band in grades 12 mostly. Um, in addition to that, you have the option of taking, um, of participating in the marching band, which is an extracurricular activity. This can also count as a physical education requirement. And you can also, if you're um, not able to play an instrument, but you still are very interested in music, um, we have a great history and rock and roll class um, where they, they study kind of everything um, from the Beatles on up to some pretty current music as well. So some very interesting courses in the um, music program. One of my favorite places to walk through a building, always hearing um, great sounds coming out of those areas. It seems that our music department, our, our instrumental and our vocal has had many challenges with the pandemic this year and, and they have, they've had to adjust on the fly. They're producing great pieces of work and I'm very proud of the, everything that they're doing. And as we move forward, please consider if you have ventured away from the vocal or instrumental uh, departments to kind of maybe venture back in next year. Hopefully we're back into some kind of normalcy and we would love to have you part of those programs moving forward. Absolutely. And that goes, you know, like Mr. Heim said, um, some of our numbers were a little bit smaller this year, but we're looking forward to getting those back on track next year um, with our, you know, our vocal music and along with our instrumental music. Um, the vocal music has done some phenomenal concerts in the past, some great trips. They've, um, they've won many awards. Um, we look forward to our students participating in those programs and building the, um, those programs up over the next few years. All right, so we're going to jump to science next. Um, science, another one of those programs where there are some required courses, along with some courses um, that our students take um, just for interest or um, focused on a career pathway as well. Um, so we start with our eighth grade. Uh, eighth grade science is a little bit of a mix of different um, different courses. It focuses a lot on that earth science, um, that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and a little bit of physical science in there as well. Eighth graders usually have the opportunity to take um, eighth grade science or the physical science honors course, um, depending on the course recommendations from their previous teachers. Like all high schools, we offer the traditional science courses that build upon, uh, that starts on a physical science into biology, chemistry, and the opportunity for physics. But what I'm really excited about in this department are the electives. I mean, the wide range of electives and, and advanced placement courses we have in the science department is extremely exciting. Uh, we have passionate teachers that students love to be in. So a lot of great electives. Mr. Bandera, any of them you want to highlight? Um, I think it's really cool, our forensic science program. Um, it's continued to kind of build and develop over the last couple of years. Um, some people remember the, some of the crime shows, the CSI or those type of things. Um, they're recreating some of those things in their classroom. They're doing fingerprints. They're doing blood splatter. They're doing all those different things um, that a, a a detective might be finding or a criminal investigator might be finding on a crime scene. So that's, those are pretty cool. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of the environmental science too. That's, they're doing a, you know, year long project um, focusing on how they can improve the environment around them from, a, um, you know, maybe have some future EPA workers in that department. Um, and the same goes with our chemistry. Our students take the, um, the chemistry courses, whether it's the general chemistry, the AP chemistry, the honors, um, you know, they're always, they're very hands-on programs, and that's that's kind of the cool thing. Um, a good break from your day if you need a good hands-on approach to to learning. And for those students who want to specifically get in the health fields of any of wide range of areas, we do have those opportunities too. So you know the AP is second to none in this area, and we're very proud of what they do. Um, almost done here. We're just kind of talking about our social studies department next. Um, again, social studies is one of those required um, courses, but it also has some outstanding electives as well. Um, our eighth graders all start with the um, the history of the United States, going from the kind of beginning of the United States through 1870. Our ninth graders talk about a little more modern world history, kind of more focused on that world approach, and then getting to our tenth grade where they um, are talking more about the modern world history. I'll be interested to see what the history books will say about this year and probably after they write those in a few years because I'm sure we're living history at the moment. And that's one of the things that we could say about the several of the electives that we offer after students get through the government piece, 
uh, either their junior and senior years, they, they can deal in the electives that are current based that they can use in various fields that they may study, or they can dive in a little deeper into some of the history that was presented in previous years, but not into the great depth in the specifics that maybe you can in a Nazi Germany course or the military history and really get down to a, a deeper level of why things happen and what could have happened and how things could have changed through history if different events would have occurred differently. So it's a it's wide range, just like all the other departments of providing electives and our choice for our students. And a lot of our juniors focus and seniors focus on the psychology and sociology, which are two very different social studies classes. Um, focusing on you know psychology, how the brain works and how people think, and sociology, how groups of people interact with each other. Um, so very, very interesting courses, and those are both offered um, at the, uh, the standard and the AP level as well, as we, as we talk about here with the AP courses. Um, one of our probably largest selection of AP courses comes from the Social Studies Department, um, where we focus all the way on European history, all the way up to world history, um, with, with some classes in between there. Um, the human geography class. Mr. Hyman, want to talk about that? That's been a growing class over the last couple of years. I'll tell you, that's probably the, the hottest course that we offer here at the at the high school. And I, maybe it's because we offer it to such a vast uh, range of grade levels, but the students absolutely love it. It's intriguing. It's something that they can use on when they get on Jeopardy, quite honestly, and answer those questions. Um, but it, it's a dynamic course taught by a dynamic teacher. And the kids are really loving it. I, I'm not sure. We're going to get to a point where we're going to have to have a full day of this person just teaching AP HUD. It, it's just blowing up here at the high school. Excellent. All right, our world languages department. Um, so world languages um, is uh, sometimes called the foreign language department. Talk about different languages that um, our students can learn. Um, this, this program always amazes me because I was never a strong foreign language student or world language student. Um, I think Mr. Heim could probably agree with that on his side of it. Um, but our eighth grade and ninth grade students have a kind of opportunity to start with um, getting, getting to explore some of those classes, whether it's the passport to languages or passport to world cult cultures. Um, those are kind of a great way to kind of dip your feet into the um, world languages um, before you jump into a, um, a course moving on from there. Um, so let me jump to uh, the Spanish routes. Mr. Heim, you want to talk about some of the Spanish courses? Yeah, we, we do offer two languages here at the high school. We offer Spanish and we offer French. Uh, we offer the traditional Spanish one through four. We have an AP Spanish. And then if, if you're so fortunate and gifted to get through all that, we have a summit course, which is more of a semester base and offer some phenomenal things. Our Spanish numbers are growing each year. So we're very excited about what we're doing here in Spanish. And then on the French side, um, a lot of our students do still study French. Um, not all high schools offer French, which is, um, but we're excited to continue offering that. Um, so French, you can kind of take the same path. Um, you could take uh, French one, um, two, all the way up to uh, the AP French and the World Language Summit in um, French as well. Um, so a very interesting program. Um, they're always doing fun things. And also, yeah, I'm just studying the language. They're studying the culture of the different countries as well. So very, uh, very interesting department. Um, and usually in typical years, there's always some great food who come, that comes out of those departments as well. <laughs> all right, so we have covered all the departments. I know we have not done a nearly as good of job as um, the, each of those departments would do. So if you have questions specifically about any of those departments, um, we encourage you to reach out to our department contacts for each of those. Um, they're listed on the screen. You can explore this on your own. Um, all of our email addresses are at chardonschools.org. And feel free, if you have a question, you say, hey, that science class looked interesting. I really want to know a little bit more about it. Um, reach out to Mr. Robertson or reach out to any of our teachers here to um, understand more about the program and um, see if that's a class that you think you'd be a good fit in. Um, students have those, current students, have those conversations with your teachers as well. Um, you should have a big voice in your course recommendations. That's a big thing we want to focus on this year, that you have a voice um, if you think you should take a course, talk to a teacher. Get that teacher's opinion on why you should or maybe shouldn't take that course, or maybe they have a different direction for you to take. To make the best decision, you need to have an informed decision. So the more information, Mr. Bandera is exactly right. The more information you can have, the better chances you make the right decision and get into the courses you want. 
uh, and do it now. The key is do it now. Get those courses. When that information comes out, do it as fast as you get in there so you can get the courses you want and you don't get locked out of that course that everyone wants to have. We thank you for your time this evening. Um, I know we talked for a little while here. Um, go through a presentation, spend some time, talk about it with your families, and um, make your, make your um, course selections wisely. Thank you again, and have a good evening. I appreciate you taking the time today to watch our video and learn more about College Credit Plus and the timelines regarding that program. I also appreciate you taking the time to learn more about what we do best here at Chardon High School as we live the mission and vision of our school district. There will be an opportunity for you to have question and answers uh, set forth on February 11th at 7 p.m. There will be a live Google Meet uh, where you can come in and join our session where the guidance and administrative team will be present uh, to answer any questions you have about our program of study during the parent-teacher conference night and anything regarding to CCP. Again, check out some of the videos inside of the slides uh, that is presented inside of the communication sent and also the attached program of studies so you can learn more about these course offerings and their descriptions. There will be also sent to you the course selections sheets all within one communication and it will also be shared with you inside of the weekroom reflection. Have a great night and go toppers.